Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in New York, and I have an interest in um, the subject of palpitations and ectopic heartbeats. Uh, and um, I was really keen um, <clears throat> to do another video. It's been a while since I did my last video, and that's predominantly because I've been away on holiday and I've been quite busy. Um, but since I've started doing the videos, I've actually had a lot of people write to me and contact me uh, because they've been troubled with palpitations. And I've become, a, I've become aware of exactly how big this problem is. Uh, the problem of ectopic heartbeats, the problem of people feeling ectopics, uh, the problem whereby people go to their doctors and the doctor says, look, it's nothing dangerous, it's a bit of ectopic, you know, it's just a few ectopics, they're benign, nothing bad's going to happen to you. And the patient goes home and continues to feel them and this causes him a lot of concern. Uh, and uh, a lot of times patients really don't know where to turn to. And um, I... Um, I've spoken to a lot of you uh, who've had ectopics, and um, I've spoken a lot about the various different things that can cause ectopics. Uh, and most of those things are related to our lifestyle. Um, whilst I've been talking to you, I've been trying to work out in my own mind, is there one common thing that runs between the majority of people I see with ectopic heartbeats or with symptomatic palpitations? Is there one thing that underpins all this? And what I have found from speaking to people is that the one thing that seems to be common in the majority of patients is that they have some sort of health-related anxiety, that they're generally anxious people and they're particularly worried about their health. And that is by far the commonest thing I've found in people who complain of symptomatic palpitations, you know, palpitations, PBCs, PACs. When you look in further, you find that there's a degree of anxiety. And a lot of uh, patients are actually taking medications for anxiety or will openly say, look, you know, I do suffer from anxiety. It's not something that's hidden away or covert. It's actually very obvious that they have anxiety. But that's the one thing that underpins this. So my, the reason I'm doing this talk is to try and work out why is it that anxiety causes people to feel ectopic beats? Why, why does anxiety cause ectopic beats? Um, so I've looked into this and I wanted to try and explain it in a bit um, in, in an easy way. Now let's say I take a hundred people off the street, okay? A hundred asymptomatic people who have no symptoms of palpitations, who have no symptoms of PVCs or PACs. And I put a monitor on them for 24 hours. At the end of those 24 hours, if I look through the results, I will find that at least 70 of those 100 people will have some ectopics on the monitor, PVCs or PACs, but they'll have some ectopics on the monitor. But remember, they're not feeling these ectopics. These are asymptomatic patients. So that tells us that ectopics are not uncommon. Okay, at the end of the day, your heart is like a machine, but it can't be perfect all the time. And it does, um, it does throw off ectopics from time to time. And that is not an uncommon thing. And neither is that a hugely abnormal thing. Having ectopics is not abnormal. However, what is abnormal is feeling them. Because the majority of times, the majority of people who, you know, have ectopics, but they don't feel them. Uh, whereas the people who come to me say, look, I feel these ectopics, I feel my ectopics, I feel palpitations, and I know that the PVCs and the PACs, and they're destroying me, and they've made my life hell. And so then the question arises, why do these people feel these ectopics? What is making them feel these ectopics? So if you take 100 people who are now symptomatic with palpitations or symptomatic with ectopics, who are saying, look, I'm feeling these ectopics, and you do a monitor on them, okay? There is undoubtedly a large proportion where you will see that their palpitations coincide with ectopics. But equally well, you will also see 
that sometimes when they're complaining of palpitations, there are no ectopics and the heart rhythm is completely normal. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that not all ectopics cause palpitations and not all palpitations are ectopic beats. And so the question is, how does anxiety cause you to have or feel these ectopic beats? Now, the easy way to try and explain this is this. Some of you may have been pregnant, okay? Uh, now, you, if you think back when you were pregnant or when you found out that you were pregnant, I bet that everywhere you looked, people were falling pregnant. Everywhere you looked, you'd see pregnant people. For example, if you buy this amazing car that you've been waiting for, that you've been saving up for, and you buy it and it's blue and it's a Mercedes, the first day when you start driving it, everywhere you look, you'll see more blue Mercedes than any other, any other time in your life. You'll just notice blue cars, you'll notice the Mercedes, you'll notice exact models, and suddenly it'll be like everyone's got one. So the point is that you have lowered your threshold. Your body, your mind lowers the threshold for picking things up, okay? And when they are relevant to you. And this is what anxiety does. It lowers your threshold for picking things up. So for a lot of people, when I've spoken to you, um, them, it has emerged that they've had some kind of situation. They've either been involved in a, in a very stressful situation or they've lost a loved one suddenly due to health issues or they've had a, a breakup and they've been lying in bed and they've been thinking and because they're they're stressed and their adrenaline is going their heart is beating faster and faster and because their heart is beating faster they notice that as palpitations but as they start noticing this once in a while an ectopic will kick in it does that's normal that's not an abnormal thing but at that point because they've lowered that sensitivity um, they've lowered the threshold for picking things up, they will notice that ectopic. Once they've noticed that ectopic, it becomes incredibly difficult to forget that sensation. And therefore, what happens is people then say, why do I notice them? Why do I notice them? And this is how it happens. You get into this vicious cycle. Suddenly, you're lying there listening to your heart. Your heart is pounding. Your heart is pounding because you are stressed, you are anxious about something. And then an ectopic kicks in because they normally do. That's just a normal thing. But because you've lowered your threshold and you're listening out, um, you will notice that ectopic and suddenly you'll think, oh my God. And that ectopic then causes so much more anxiety to build up. And you feel scared. You think, oh, my heart's going to stop. What's going to happen to me? And your heart races further. And then the next one comes along and you feel that. And before you realize it, what tends to happen is, Anytime you feel anything in your heart, be that a normal beat or an ectopic beat, um, when you're stressed, you will just start noticing a lot more. And that is why people get with anxiety, complain of ectopic heartbeats or complain of palpitations. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that it is the brain playing a trick. It's not that there's something horrible going on in your heart. What's going on in your heart is a normal phenomena your brain is playing tricks on you. It's lowering the threshold. Another analogy I can give you is, for example, um, if you're uh, sitting, uh, you know, in a day, for example, you, you know, the, the, you, can hear, um, you can hear the telephone ring a thousand times and you don't pay any attention to it. Now imagine if you're on your own in the middle of the night watching a scary movie, watching a movie about a babysitter who receives phone calls from a killer, and then suddenly the phone rings. You see how relevant that suddenly becomes to you, how much of a reaction that will bring in you. You know, suddenly that bell will sound much louder, that bell will have so much more uh, meaning, and that bell will um, cause so much more um, uh, a rise in your heart rate. Whereas actually, it's just a normal bell. It's the kind of bell that you hear every day. But you've suddenly made it so much more relevant to you, and therefore you'll load your threshold. And this is why um, people with um, 
anxiety complain of ectopic heartbeats? The answer is to try and understand that the ectopics are not something that are abnormal. They're not dangerous, okay? And once you realize that, then the next thing is to work on your anxiety. And the next thing is to perhaps, the first thing to realize is that, okay, you're not going to fall, drop down dead. Nothing bad is gonna happen to you. Take deep breaths in and out, okay? And then if you can, try and see if you can get some uh, cognitive behavioral therapy uh, to try and cope with the anxiety so that you can then unlearn uh, what you have learned about the ectopics or I, you start uh, subconsciously putting them to the side and beginning <laughs> begin ignoring them. And that is, um, I, do, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to take lots of medications uh, for your anxiety because me medications largely just mask the symptoms of anxiety. I think it's more important to try and to get to the root cause of why you're anxious, what has happened, and you should do this through behavioral therapy and psychological counseling, etc. And if you can do that, then you will find that you welcome these ectopics as just a normal phenomena that happens in your body. And that once you start welcoming them, they won't bother you anymore. All right. So I hope this was helpful. I promise to try and do more <laughs> videos um, in the near future. We've just been very busy. There is a new member in the York cardiology family. I'll call her. Um, uh, and I'll introduce her to you just before we leave. So, Bluebell, do you want to come here? Come in. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, here you go. This is Bluebell. Hi, Bluebell. Say hello. Say hello. This is uh, the new member of, uh, this is Bluebell Gupta, the new member of uh, your cardiology. <laughs> All right. All the best. You can find me on, um, Facebook, and you can find me on Twitter. And should you want to talk to me or should you want to consult with me, then you can always do so through my website or you can ring my long suffering secretary, Jeanette, on 01904 If you do like this video, then please, uh, please subscribe to my channel and please don't hesitate to uh, let other people know about it because I've found that a lot of people have found these videos beneficial and it has helped them with their palpitations. Thank you so much. Bye now.